Hey guys, I am Mrs. Coster. I'm so sorry that I could not come to open house this year. I've never missed an open house before, but I wanted to make sure to provide you with information. So what you are watching right now is what I call a flipped lecture. This is what your students have to do all the time. So I want to provide you with some important information about my class um, so that you have an idea of what we're doing in on-level biology and what's expected of your student. So when they come into my classroom, it always looks something like this. They have a warm-up of a question that they have to answer in their composition notebook. They have their daily agenda, what are we doing in class that day, and then any homework reminder. So any upcoming assignments, quizzes, tests, it all goes there. They should see that as soon as they walk in the door every single day. So on level biology, I love teaching this course. It's really fun. It's really hands-on. I'm a high-tech person, so my class is a high-tech person. You can see this sort of thing is, is what your students will see all the time. It is a really fast-paced course, and the reason for that is because it's also an EOC course, which means at the end of the year, they take that state standardized exam, and in high school, that test is worth 20% of their grade. So us teachers, we work really hard to make sure that your students are prepared for that, which means that the course has to move pretty quickly um, to give us enough time to cover everything and then also to give us time to review there at the end. But we will make sure that your students are very prepared for that so that they all do well. Lasseter traditionally has really great scores, so no need to be nervous. So again, on-level biology um, is a really fun course. This, these are some pictures of, of students doing labs already this year. So we're only a few weeks in, and yet we've already done a couple of labs. We do labs all throughout the year. And you can see that. I'm going to go ahead and skip to this slide. You can see some of those pictures on my Twitter account. So feel free to follow me on Twitter. My handle is at BioBiCoster. So one of the keys to success in on-level biology is communication between me and you, the parents, the guardians, the grandparents, whoever. So you can always email me at any time. My email is right there, meredith.coster at cobk12.org. Some of you, your students have an additional support teacher in the classroom, and his name is Mr. Spear. You can email him at any time as well. He's a biology teacher just like me. He can answer questions about the content, or he can answer questions about um, study tips or anything like that. And we'll both respond to emails as soon as possible, keeping in mind that if you email us after school hours, we may not get it until the next day. So again, just ways to keep in touch. It's really important for you to know what's going on in the classroom. The best way to do that is to sign up for these uh, remind text message alerts, I guess you could call them. So if you text at Coster LHS in the message to this number right here, 81010, that will sign you up for the text message that I send to the students. And I send them reminders about everything. So when they have video lectures coming up, when they have an upcoming quiz or a test, when we're meeting in the media center, when we're doing a lab and they need to wear certain clothes. So if you want to get those as well so that you are up to date with what's happening in the classroom, that's going to be your best bet. So you might want to pause the video now to go ahead and do that. Again, you can keep up with what we're doing in the classroom by following me on Twitter. You'll see um, lots. every time we do an activity or a lab, I usually take pictures and videos and post those. They like seeing themselves on my Twitter account. I think I have like 90 whole followers. And then the other big thing is going, is going to be to keep up with the class blog or website. So I would encourage you to go ahead and check that out. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So when you go to my website, it looks like this. You can get all of the documents for every unit by clicking up here, or you can scroll down on that main web page and you can find my blog posts and they just sort of scroll down. Um, I post the weekly schedule there and I post any and every electronic document that I have. So you'll definitely want to check that out. And the way that you get there, where's my PowerPoint? The way that you get there is by going to that Lassiter homepage, clicking on academics, clicking on science, and then finding my name. That's how you get to the blogs of all of your teachers. So that, that class blog, that website, is going to be another key to success in my class. Uh, like I said, I post the weekly schedule there. I download, you can download all of the classroom documents. So if your student loses something in that black hole of a book bag, you don't have to worry about it because they can find it there on the blog. Um, what you're watching right now is what I call a flipped lecture video, and that simply means like it's the opposite of a traditional classroom. In a traditional classroom, the teacher is standing at the board talking the entire class, and then the kids get sent on their merry little way with some sort of homework assignment. A flipped classroom is the opposite. So they do the easy part at home, the, um, you know, watch a video and take notes on it on a paper that I provide you, and then all that hard stuff that they used to have to do at home together, they are going to do in the classroom with me where, where I'm there to help them. And then also on the class blog, you can find that online textbook. So just a little bit more about these flipped classroom lecture videos. Um, I always give them more than one way to download them. That way there's no excuse of, well, I clicked on the link and it didn't work. So there's always several ways, at least three, sometimes four. 
They're always 15 minutes or less, so anywhere ranging from 10 to 15 minutes. I give about two per unit, so we're not talking about, you know, they're, they're not watching a video every day or anything like that. It gives the students more control over their note taking, so you don't have students who are waiting on others, or you don't have students who is the one being waited on to finish those notes. It means that I spend less time talking at the front of the room and more time doing things with the kids. I can, I can help them get to those higher levels of understanding because I'm there to help them do that. And then, like I said, the easy stuff is done at home. And the way that I present this to the kids and, and what really gets them to buy into it is I ask them, how many of you have ever been sitting in a class where you're sitting there taking notes while the teacher's up at the board and you're like, oh yeah, this totally makes sense. I'm really smart. I get this. But then when you go home to continue working on that, you have no idea where to start. And they're all like, oh yeah, I've definitely been there. Well, the flipped classroom really takes that away because you're just taking notes. You're just watching a video. The answers are there. You're writing them down on the organizer that I provide you. And now we're going to do more um, hands-on activities in class together. Another key to success are just doing those daily assignments and making sure that your students are keeping up with these. So ask them to look at their composition notebook every once in a while. It should be in their, no, it should be in their book bag. Every day they have a warm-up. Um, the sheets and activities that we do throughout the unit, they keep those and they form what's called a unit packet and they turn those in on the day of the test. So ask them to see. Let me see your unit packet items make sure you're doing that. Um, most of that we do in class together, so that should be an easy, easy grade. They, there really only should be like, okay, now you need to finish a couple questions at home. If your student the day before the test is saying, oh, I have these 10 pages to do for my unit packet, then that just means they're not being diligent in their time in class. Because like I said, we do a lot of that together. And then labs, making sure they understand what was the purpose of the lab. And students really struggle with this in high school. They love doing labs, but when it comes time to answer questions about them, what did this lab mean? that's when they struggle. And you'll see that these early lab grades might, n might not be as, as high as you would like, but they'll get better, I promise. And then just all of those daily learning activities. We play lots of games. Um, we do lots of things with technology. So ask your student, you know, keep up with those remind text messages so that you can hear about what we're doing in class every day. And then another key to success are going to be utilizing your study tools. So the unit packets, making sure those are complete before a test. Have your student teach you about what they are learning in biology. Research shows that one of the best ways to study is to teach someone else the material. How many times has someone been explaining something to you and you can very clearly tell that they don't really understand? So if your student can go from beginning to end and you understand what they're saying, then that means that your student understands it. If your student is trying to explain something to you, you know, they're teaching you about enzymes and you cannot learn anything by what they're explaining, then that probably means that they don't really understand it. I do hand out study guides, which gives them a list of terms they need to know, concepts they need to understand, and things they need to be able to do for the test. And then I also utilize a website called Zondel. Encourage your student to use Zondel as a way to review before a test. It gives them its practice test questions, questions that I have made with multiple choice answers. It helps them see these are the kinds of questions my teacher is going to expect me to know for this upcoming test. And then last slide, um, we're always in need of certain things to be donated to the classroom. We had lots of tissues and lots of paper towels donated. So here are just some random things that we could still use. Any colored copy paper would be fantastic. Sharpies, black or colored Sharpies would be awesome. Colored post-it notes. And then I know this sounds weird, but if at any time you're at the store, grocery store, Walmart, wherever, between now and about Halloween, if you see black licorice, if you could pick it up and send it in, that would be awesome. I know it sounds strange, but it's actually for a lab and it's, sometimes they're hard to find. So if you see black licorice, send them in. So like I said, I'm so sorry that I couldn't make it to open house this year. Uh, I really look forward to you know meeting you and communicating with you throughout the year. I'm looking forward to a wonderful year in on-level biology. And like I said before, please feel free to shoot me an email at any time if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks.